Our series for the next four weeks is to pick apart just one verse of scripture, Jeremiah 6.16. It says, stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it and you will find rest for your souls. But you said, we will not walk in it. So this is week one of four. So my focus is on just one word of that verse, stand. But in order to think about that one word, you kind of have to have a general understanding of the context behind the verse. Jeremiah is a prophet in Judah at a time when there was a, there was a succession of evil kings who led God's people into idolatry and false religion and other sins. Jeremiah was there to be God's spokesperson, to call people out on the way things were going, to warn them of God's impending judgment and to encourage them to repent and turn away from sin. The problem was God's people at the time said no. And eventually Jerusalem fell to the Babylonians and it was completely destroyed. So with that context in mind, what does it mean to stand at the crossroads. To help explain, I want to just take a minute to tell you about geocaching. And we started doing it this summer as a family because Pete and I have always loved to walk, but getting the kids to love it too has proved harder. But geocaching is basically a massive treasure hunt where people hide these um, small containers and they contain like a log in it and you get given coordinates and hints for, for other people then to go and find them. Now the geocaches are absolutely everywhere and what we found is that people will often place them around one of their favourite walks. And you, you know, we have discovered so many beautiful corners um, of the Dorset countryside this summer by following other people's geocache walks. And last weekend, in fact, we were out and we found ourselves wandering down this really beautiful, straight, straight path. And it was flanked on both sides by hedgerows. And as I walked down that path with this scripture in mind, two things struck me. The first thing was that this was a path that had been trodden many a time by the setters of this geocache walk. It was tried and tested. You know, Jeremiah was also pointing towards the tried and tested ancient paths. Not just actual paths, but the ways and practices of the Lord. He wanted people to return to these practices. But as I said, the people in that time were forgetting those ways, getting distracted by other gods and turning away from the Lord. Does that sound familiar today? Now, the second thing that struck me um, was my assumption that because the setters of the geocache walk had walked that path so many times, it must in fact be a good path. And this got me thinking about shepherds. You know, when Jeremiah wrote about crossroads and ancient paths, his thoughts were likely to have been in the desert. Well, there were many, many paths, some broad and inviting and others seemingly narrow and treacherous. And if you wanted to know which path to take, you asked a shepherd because, you see, they walked the paths. They knew the pitfalls and dangers. They knew which of the broad and inviting paths ended in a precipice. And they knew that often the safest paths with the narrow ones where sheep had to walk in single file following the shepherd. So knowing this about shepherds, I think, brings to life the word picture created by David in Psalm 23. I'll read it. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. See, the Lord is our shepherd, 
and we can trust him to lead us, to provide everything that we need, to protect us, because he knows the right way. But first things first, we have to stand at the crossroads. So going back to our geocache walk for a moment, the cache that we were looking for at the end of this beautiful path was in fact at a crossroads. You know, we found our cache, we logged our geocaching name, and then the three kids and I automatically stood still and waited. Why? Well, firstly, we wanted to follow the tried and tested route. And we definitely did not want to waste leg power walking in the wrong direction. You know, we were committed to the route. Part of the meaning to stand is to be sure and strong in your faith, knowing what you stand for, taking time to understand and learn the word and the ways of God. Now have a think about your own commitments, your own priorities. Are they leading you astray? Jeremiah is warning people not to turn away from the ways of God. He is calling them to repent and to turn back to the good and safe path. Now, secondly, on our geocache walk, we didn't know which way to go next. We stood still and waited because we didn't know which way to go next. And there were multiple options. But what we did know was that after every cache, Pete will check his phone for the map and we'll read out the hint for how we find the next cache. P is effectively acting as our shepherd. He can see the paths. He can see the dangers and the pitfalls and all the options opening up in front of us. This passage in Jeremiah and Psalm 23 shows us that if we choose to make the Lord our shepherd, then he will always direct us to the good path, the perfect path for our lives, and that he will tell us which way to go if we trust in him and are prepared to stand still long enough to listen. And that is critical. To stand is to abide. It is to take time with and rest with God to reassess and reflect on what we have been doing and to grow in our relationship with him and trust with him. It is then that we hear him. You know, our reading today about Elijah is helpful because it shows that God doesn't just reveal himself in, in powerful and miraculous ways, you know, the, the fire and the earthquake. His, his guidance is not reserved only for big, church gatherings or large rallies, his voice is a whisper. It is personal and gentle, spoken to a humble heart. And we must be careful not to get distracted by the busyness and the noise of a hectic life or by the next shiny new thing or what everybody else is doing. He talks to us when we stand with him and listen. Which is why the COVID-19 lockdown has provided such a unique moment in history to stand with God, both personally and as a nation. It gave us time and space to reassess the things that we have been doing. And also then to decide which of those things we are gonna continue doing and which we don't want to go back to. It is a chance to repent if necessary and turn back to the ancient paths. But the opportunity has not passed. We are still at a crossroads. Now, do you know what you stand for? Are you grounded in the word and practices of God? Are you prepared to stand and listen rather than rush down that broad and inviting path driven by our own desires and agendas? And are you being drawn away from God? Whatever your answers, I want to end by simply reminding you that the shepherd 
knows the safest and best path to take. Even if to our worldly eyes, the path might not appear obvious, or it might look too narrow and terrifying. But when the Lord is our shepherd, and when we stand and listen, he will reveal the good way. <laughs>